Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com bringing you another fly time video today. This day I'm on the stream and I'm going to be showing you how I fish a pattern and then we'll get back to the studio and tie it for you. Um, I've been kind of hesitant on doing this video because there's already some out there. It's, there's some that actually tie it the way I tie it. It's the cicada. Right now this is brood 10 years, 2021. And uh, on the east coast here it's brood X, brood 10. Um, this is the year that it's mainly from Harrisburg to Reading, down through Maryland. Here at our shop, we're sitting right on the northern edge of it. We sit below the little Juniata and Spruce Creek and Penn's Creek and all that. And uh, they're not getting it this year. The, the year for them is 2025. That's brood 14. And uh, this year, like I said, it's Blair County. The southern end of Blair County is the northern end of this hatch. And it's actually been pretty strong here in the area south of our shop. Really heavy around the shop. There's been, we've been catching some fish there by the shop and, uh, and a lot south of it. So today I'm gonna see, I'm gonna hop in the stream here beside me. I'm gonna see if I can't pull one or two out of this hole and tell you a little bit about how I'm catching them. Then, like I said, we're gonna go back to the studio, sit down and tie the pattern that I use here today. I will tell you I'm also dry dropper fishing. So I'm floating this cicada as a dry fly and underneath it, I'm floating a little mop fly right now, which has been doing really well for me. And uh, we're just gonna see if we can pick up a couple on the mop if we can't get one on the cicada. When I get back to the studio, it's gonna be a little bit warmer and uh, the skaters are gonna be a lot louder. Right now it's like 52 this morning outside. Perfect morning for fishing. Got the water temperatures down where you want it for, you know, for June, you really wanna fish the cold mornings like this and uh, save on the trout. But um, like I said, it's kinda of shutting the noise of the cicadas down. If we would get away from the stream here, back up by the road a little bit, you could hear them pretty loud. And I can actually hear them here, but you're probably not going to pick it up in, in my audio. Anyway, let's see if I can catch a couple fish, and then we'll get into tying it. There we go, there's a really nice one. Ooh. Nice wild brown here. Sorry about being so far away here with the film. I'm self filming this morning, but that's about a 14 inch wild brown and he just gobbled up gobbled up that cicada pattern. Um, what I'm finding, what I'm doing here is I'm searching for faster water. I want water where the fish doesn't have time to think about taking it. And uh, I'm just casting into those good fast ripples, watching my cicada every now and then. I missed one there on the dropper. Every now and then I'm giving it a twitch. You'll find when the when the cicada hits the water, it's gonna be swimming with its wings. Those wings are gonna get really active and be splashing and twitching around on the water. So what I'll do is I'll just twitch my rod tip, give that fly some action, give it some movement in the water, and that oftentimes seems to trigger a bite. A little bit difficult fishing around this tree here, but we get her done. There's another one on the cicada again. Like I said, what I'm looking for, where I found my most success, I've been staying away from the bottom of holes. I've been trying to find faster runs and that's been really productive for me and just splashing it down, making a hard cast, splashing that cicada down on the water, and then giving it some action, making it look like it's swimming. And you don't have to fish far away. 
we got nice water quality today. The water's nice and cool this cool morning. Just get out here and have fun fishing it. But like I said, it's June, heading towards July, and uh, water temperature gets warm, and we don't want to stress the fish. So do it in the morning. Here's another one. Got another one on here. It's like I don't need to drop her today. I need the cicada. Okay, here you see Greg Hoover's cicada pattern in the vise. Very cool. This is actual size, tied on a size 6, 839 fire hole hook. This is the fly that I'm going to be using if I'm fishing for carp or smallmouth on the river. Um, but, for as you saw me catching these uh, little wild trout and um, stock trout and stuff, it's a little hard to get that size 6 in the vise. So I'm going to actually tie this on a size 10. And I'm going to start out with this size 10 fire hole 839 hook. I'm going to put some black thread on here. And this is 12 watt nano silk. Um, I like it because it bites down on that foam and stuff real good. Next thing I'm going to do is put on a piece of black 5 millimeter foam. You see this is uh, the 5 millimeter black foam. You can get this at a craft store, Walmart or anything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut like a reverse Y in it I guess you would say. I'm going to leave a strand that I'm going to tie down here. Oh, I should say this is about 3 eighths of an inch wide is the size I want it for this size 10 hook. I'm going to, out of the middle of that, I'm going to cut a little strand and then taper it down both sides. Then once I get that, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut at an angle like this. Okay, I'm going to angle this foam and trim that Y in half. So you can see how I tapered it up to the body part here. And we're just going to tie this down on the hook. So I'm going to tie it down clear up towards the eye there, build up a little bit of body with the foam, but I trimmed it in half to cut down on some of that body. We're going to wrap it clear back to the bend. I want looser wraps to start with so I don't cut through the foam, especially with this nano silk, and then, uh, then tie it down tighter. So once we get that all wrapped down, then I'm going to take some variegated chenille. Here's my piece. This is um, black orange in medium size, and I'm just going to tie it down up by the eye. Gonna tie it down, and we're going to wrap it back to the bend too. And then bring my thread back up to the eye, and we're going to wrap the chenille forward. And I don't. I want thick because I want it to show through the bottom of the body, but I don't really, I want nice tight wraps. I don't really want overlapping wraps. I'm going to get that right up to the eye and tie it off. So once we tie that off, we're just going to trim this and set it aside for our next one. And then I'm going to jump back about one third. I'm going to make make a wrap around there at about one third and I'm going to pull my body up over the top. This is going to make the back of the cicada and we're just going to tie it down start out with a loose one or two wraps and then a tight one and then I'm going to go underneath here go up to my eye and I'm going to make one or two wraps there. So We're going to make the front part of the body. Now you can see how it's pretty wide here at the back, and I want to help this get into fish's mouth. So what I like to do here is I like to trim off the sides, because if you look at a cicada, if you look at a live one, it does have a taper from the front to the back on it. So I just get that natural taper from the front to the back. Try to keep it nice and smooth and natural, just like that. And you see we have the two segments to the body. So I'm going to come back into the back segment here. And we're going to put on our legs. For legs, I'm using some um, barred round rubber medium legs, orange and black. And it comes, you see here it's got a zip tie strap. 
one side is single strands, the other side's all together. I'm just going to take one of the one side off, and then I'm going to cut that piece in half. So it's about, I don't know, inch and a half, two inches long. We're going to trim them down here in a little bit, but we're just going to put one leg on each side. And I want it to be in the foam area, not underneath. It doesn't matter which side's the long side because we're going to trim them down later. So like I said, one on each side and tie it into that foam. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a wing. For a wing, I'm using Crystal Flash. And I'm using a little bit of orange and pearl. Just mixed together. And about 20 to 30 strands of each. And then right between them legs, I'm going to tie this in. I'm going to tie it in, get it where I want it, get it centered there. And then I'm going to make a couple tighter wraps on that. And just keep tying in between them legs. And then we're going to trim this off. And I want that wing to go just past... Just past the body. If you lay this down here, you see I'm going just past the end of the body. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to fold this foam back over. And I'm going to tie in between them legs again. So this is going to create the head on the fly. And just going to make about three or four wraps. And then I'm going to come up here to the eye and tie it off up there. Now, you could use orange thread if you want here. Orange thread will work well too. I like the black because it doesn't show as much. Dad ties it with orange on his flies and it looks great. This is just the way I like to tie it. Okay, so we're going to cut our thread off there. Now you see we got this big tag up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors, go in behind the wing and be above the head and I'm just going to trim off at an angle. You see what I got there? And then I'll come in pinch the wings out of the way and I just trim each side down so there you see the top of the fly your wing and your leg and then I'm just gonna shorten up these legs to a proportionate length there you go Oops, lost focus there you go got it all in proportion now and that's how I tie the pattern that I use to catch my smaller wild trout on wild trout streams with. So this one will get in the mouth of those smaller fish. If you like, my dad likes to take a little bit of orange paint from the craft store and put a little pair of eyes down there. I like fishing this as you saw. I like fishing it in faster water so the trout don't really see the eyes and don't really care. Hope you like it. Alright guys, I hope you liked this video. I had fun making it to you, getting on the stream this morning. Brought you out back here after tying the video so you could hear the cicadas. Hopefully you can hear them here. If not, I did find one. Hold it up to the mic there and let it make some noise for you. Combine a couple thousand of them in the trees and it's a lot of noise. So, Anyways guys, they're a lot of fun to fish. They catch you big fish too. And they're going to fatten the fish up this summer. But anyways, if you need the material to tie them, find it at our shop at wholesingersflyshop.com. We're selling the flies in the shop too. You can reach out to us if you want to get a hold of some of the flies that we have tied. Um, Dad's tying them up. He does a great job. I've been trying to keep up with uh, filling the box with all our other flies, so I haven't been tying too many of the cicadas. But I am fishing them and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So like I said, if you need them, find them at wholesingersflyshop.com. Check, them, check us out on our website and uh, also on Instagram and Facebook and, of course, your YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Until next week, guys, when I bring you another video, I'm Sean Holsinger.